the Monstrum Tactical 3 to 9 by 40 tactical rifle scope. Let's start off this review by just discussing why someone might want this product and who is the target audience of this product. This scope is definitely aimed at the consumer on a budget. Somebody who wants an optic to equip an AR-15 or similar light combat style rifle with an optic that has a lot of features at a minimum cost. So a little bit about this scope. I purchased this scope for under $100. I think normally it runs for about $100. I found it on Amazon for, I believe it was about $85 delivered. So it's definitely a very inexpensive scope in the world of scopes. And I was originally attracted to it because I looked at other scopes NC Star, UTG, Leapers, and it seemed to kind of run in that same price range and have a lot of the same features, but it looked to be higher quality and of a better build quality than those competing scopes. And so that's kind of why I was attracted to this. I think most people are going to be running on an AR-15, that's what I did. I ran this on two different rifles, an M4 profile. AR-15 and 223, and then also a rifle profile AR-15 and 300 blackout. The results I got from those two different rifles, judging this scope, were pretty similar. So, the whole reason somebody would probably buy this is they're they're looking for value. They're looking to get something that's built rugged and get the most bang for their buck. Now if you're of the old school mentality of something that weighs more is better made, something that's heavier is more durable, then you might actually have a little bit more faith in this scope because that idea actually lends a little bit of credence to the construction of this thing. It is heavy. Now it's not several pounds, it's not massive, but for a scope this size, Lugging it around on a rifle, you you notice the weight for sure, and I think a lot of that is because this is all steel. The tube is steel, the mount is steel, the turret caps are aluminum, and I think maybe the laser is aluminum, but the majority of it's steel, and so, so that definitely adds to the weight, but I think that also might be why it tends to be a little bit more durable than similar really cheap rifle scopes like UTG, NC Star, etc. that are made out of really cheap aluminum. Now this thing is Chinese made. Let's see if you can, here's the box. Made in China. I hadn't heard of Monstrum Tactical before. Most people probably hadn't. Um, it seems like it's nothing more than a marketing name. I found pretty much this exact same scope made by a variety or marketed by a variety of companies. So I imagine it's fabricated in China, sold to different distributors under different names because Monstrum Tactical only has a few scopes in their lineup. So it's not like Nikon or Bushnell or any company like that that, that has many, many different models. They only have a few, and a lot of them look just like this. And this scope is sold both with and without the laser attachment. I liked having it with the laser, and it and they were running about the same price. The glass on this scope is functional, but not much more than that. It's decently clear. If you're shooting during bright daylight, it's fine. It'll work fine. The eye relief is a little bit rough. I realized I had to get consistently very close 
to this scope and the eye box, meaning the distance between how far back you can go and how far forward you can go, is pretty small on this scope. Especially the higher magnification you get, but that's that's pretty normal. So for the glass on this thing, it pales in comparison to a Nikon or even a Bushnell. I, I was not a fan of the clarity of this optic. Um, the magnification, 3 to 9, I, I believe it's true to what they say. I, I believe I was looking at 9x. It's just a, I mean, I'm not going to be able to show you through the camera lens and give you an accurate representation of it, but just the, the exit pupil and and everything on this end of the scope really is not the best experience and with that I want to talk about some of the other features of the scope because I think that's a lot of the reason why somebody gets into a product like this they see all these features at a fairly low cost and it screams high value whether it is or not because I've had an NC star scope I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. Um, it was when I didn't really know what I was doing. I think it was the first rifle scope I ever bought. It was an NC Star. And it was a piece of junk. This is a little better. For, for about the same price, this is definitely better. It holds zero well, which, which is good. No, I didn't, I didn't drop the thing. I didn't torture test it. I just put it on an AR-15 and carried it in the field and and just kind of went about normal use. And I think a lot of that durability is due to the heavy steel that this thing is made out of. That heavy steel tube kind of held everything down and locked everything in place a little bit better. So I didn't have any problems with Zero, which is good because with both the NC Star Scope and the UTG Scope I had. It was incredibly frustrating, even on a 223 caliber rifle, how difficult it was to really trust the zero of the scope. Now, if you were to put this on a 30 6 I don't know, I'd have some doubts. But if you're going to put it on a 223, it, it'll hold zero just fine. So, let's talk about some of the other features. It's 3 to 9 by 40, as I said. Like any any scope that's adjustable magnification, turrets right here. Um, I think it moves the same direction as my Nikon scope, but backwards from my Leopold. I believe. Maybe I said that the other way around. Um, but I, I remember it's it's not the same as everything. But you get used to that pretty easily. You're looking through it. It's pretty obvious which way is zooming in, which way is zooming out. Um, the diopter ring here is all right. It doesn't have a huge range of adjustment. Typically, you don't need that, but if you're trying to focus up close, a lot of times you really have to screw with this to get both your crosshairs and your subject in focus. And so I found at the range, I was having to screw with this more than I would have expected. On most of my scopes, usually you just adjust that to the to the vision of the individual user and so I can pretty much set it once and I'm fine. I realized I was messing with this slightly more than I really needed to be. Not a huge deal. Um, the mount it comes with is a pretty pretty large, it's a three inch long rail mount and these are actually pretty heavy duty screws which which I like. I always put a dab of Loctite on the threads as I tighten it down and I didn't have any issues with this thing floating around and I think they make a similar one that comes with a quick release mount I wouldn't trust it I've, I've had bad experiences with quick release mounts unless you're gonna really pay a lot of money for them and really lock them down and really take care of them there's there's a lot to be doubtful of just based on the whole nature of something that that can come on and off your rifle and you expect it to hold zero, you should have a much, much higher standard for something like that. So I would not trust the scope of the quick release mount, but with this mount, it seemed to run fine. Um, turrets, again, these caps are aluminum. 
So it's kind of interesting. They make the side turret feel. They make the side turret feel a lot like a target turret. If you're gonna look at the adjustments there, you have them marked there external. But the top turret, the elevation turret, feels more like your everyday Joe Schmo hunting rifle turret. Now I think a lot of that is because they've got this BDC turret on here. So you set the scope to 100 yards and then if you need to go to 200 or 300 you do that by turning this turret. So they kind of combine the idea of a target turret with a lock it down, don't mess with it, 100 yards hunting turret. And so that's probably why this side feels more like a target turret. And admittedly, I think it's a little gimmicky, but it's one of the things that attracted me to this scope. I think I probably would have been better off just going with something with real target turrets. But again, for, for my purpose, for a 223 battle blaster rifle you don't you don't need target turrets you don't need really to be calculating for detailed windage on the fly or be making 100 yard to 300 yard snap adjustments with the compensator it's it's a gimmicky feature but it's probably not practical for how a consumer is actually going to use this scope. But stuff like this on a cheap scope, I'm pretty wary of. <laughs> I tend to, when I'm carrying it in the field, I tend to just say, well, I sighted this at 100 yards. That's where I know I can hit accurately. I have no idea if turning this turret, if that's actually winding up my zero and, and kind of rattling the scope and, and messing it up long run. So I tend to not mess with that. So if that's something you want to be using a lot, I'll admit this review isn't, isn't that great to answer the question. But I would look for something like that in a much higher quality scope in general than this guy. Um, while we've got it up close here, let's talk about the actual reticle. If we can do that. Might be a struggle to get it to focus. See, you can you can see just by the difficulty of getting it to focus on camera how dark this scope can be and how limited the eye relief is. Something that seems like a feature that seems cool about this scope is, oh look, it's got mill dots in there. Cool. You can you can measure your target. You can calculate windage and elevation and all that. Seems like a cool feature. Except, let's go back to the turrets. Your turrets are not in mills. Your turrets are in minutes of angle. One, one click equals a quarter inch at 100 yards. That's MOA. That's one quarter MOA adjustments. But this is not an MOA. That's in mills. So, unless you feel like doing a whole bunch of math on the fly, that's going to get pretty annoying pretty quick. Or more likely, like me, you're just going to end up ignoring the mill dots in the scope because you know that this is sighted in at 100 yards. So, oh, it's got a mill dot reticle. That's that's gimmicky. That's not really a reason to buy this scope. Yes, it's an extra feature, but it's not practical for what this scope is. If these were in mill dots, I would consider it. Or if those adjustments in the scope were in MOA, I would consider it. But as it is on this scope, it's kind of useless. Um, let's go back to the reticle again. So it does have an illuminated reticle. Man, I'm really struggling to get this thing in focus here. So the illuminated reticle is actually one of the nicer features of this scope. Um, the varying brightness, the low levels are night vision compatible. They don't they don't say it is. 
but I, I look through it with my, I have a cheap night vision scope. It's not a PVS-14 or anything, it's just a Gen 1, but it wasn't blowing my eyeballs out on the lower levels. So it's red, or, let's see if I'm going the right way with this. It can illuminate green as well. And that's definitely one of the better features. A lot of these kind of combo <laughs> scopes that also have illumination um, tend to either overdo it or underdo it. They, they have rifle crosshairs, but the illumination is a bonus feature that either is way too bright, rendering them too bright to use at night, so you're forced back into the original crosshairs, or it's so dim that, that it, or inconsistent that it's kind of pointless to use. So for the purposes of this rifle, if you're shooting in at night, if you're using a flashlight mounted on your, on your AR or whatever rifle this is mounted on, and you're using these, it actually works pretty well. So I, I think that's one of the better features of this. And it does use a, what is it, a CR2032 battery. That's just your regular small three volt button cell battery. On a lot of red dots, I would recommend anything that uses a CR123 battery. That's the, the bigger 12 volt battery. Um, I think that gives you a much brighter dot on a red dot scope. But on this, the smaller three volt battery, uh, I was fine with. Maybe that's because the scope in general is a darker picture. So the light that's needed to, to purely bounce off of the reticle and reflect back doesn't need to be as bright. But that's a nice feature, and I like that. Uh, this also has a laser. Let's see if you can see that. Which is also kind of a cool feature, kind of gimmicky. Um, I liked it on, on my M4 platform rifle because I could be sighted up to 100 yards but I sighted the laser at 50, so if maybe I was hunting with this thing, varmint hunting, I had it sighted to 100 yards, but something ran out at 50, I could use this not only to figure out whether it's closer to 50 yards or 100 yards, because sometimes some, something will walk out at 70 yards or 60 yards, and 60 yards versus 80 yards could be a big difference, and sometimes that's hard to eyeball. So I wanted to just... Just kind of figure that out. And the the laser, zero the laser. It's got Allen wrench adjustments right here, and zeroing this laser comes in handy. So all in all, this scope is is pretty decent. It's definitely better than your NC Star. Definitely better than your UTG or Leapers.